thee we come, O Lord our God. that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, please make an examination of your conscience. For your penance for the next three nights, besides offering your morning and evening prayer, to take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church on this 12th Sunday in the ordinary, to reread in silence and to meditate upon the importance of the message. And now let us all recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned and thought word and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Thus we do not fear, though earth be shaken and mountains quake, to the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and mountains totter at its surging. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, 
We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you are the consolation and salvation of those who trust you. The tempests of the world rage about us, and the sea of life often carries us far from you. Speak your word of command that the earthly storms may subside, and we may be guided in peace to the harbor of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jimmy, will you please proclaim the word? Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shuts within the door of the sea when it bursts forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands, when I set lemons for it and fastened fire of its door and said, Thus far shall you come with no further, and here shall you proud waves be still. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The gradual. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits, he rescued them. He hushed the storm and the and A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ compels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for us, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him, who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. And even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him, so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. That day, as evening drew near, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, 
They took Jesus with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. from today's gospel according to St. Mark in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen to you my dear brothers and sisters gathered in the name of Jesus Christ due to the topology of the land surrounding the Sea of Galilee many violent storms take place the Sea of Galilee lies 680 feet below sea level. It is surrounded by hills, especially on the east side, that rises over 2,000 feet, producing cool and dry air. In the center of this basin is the Sea of Galilee, which is a semi-tropical region producing warm, moist air. When these two regions collide, the differences between these two land masses create sudden changes in temperature and pressure, causing strong winds dropping to the sea, which funnel through the hills. Think about the topology and the weather conditions of the state of Oklahoma where the winds of the Rocky Mountains collide with the lowlands and the Midwest. This area is known as Tornado Alley due to this extreme weather. In today's story, Jesus, having preached to the crowds, departs at night in a boat with his disciples. There were other boats that accompanied him. Now Mark tells us that Jesus was asleep in the stern of the boat when a violent squall appeared. And as St. Matthew comments, it came upon them suddenly and without warning. This storm was so violent that the boat was filling with water. It is now that the disciples woke Jesus 
and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They didn't say Jesus. There is a bad storm. But rather, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They were afraid of losing their lives, their very lives. Although many of them were fishermen and knew about the violence of the Sea of Galilee, where many of them worked. We have all heard the phrase, the storms of life. Every single one of us has experienced, are experiencing, or will experience storms in various degrees throughout our lives. Some storms will not be as bad as others, but when we are faced with a storm in our life so violent that we are afraid of perishing, even though we have been baptized into the faith, will naturally cry out to the Lord, Jesus, do you not care? When we see in the lives of others, our family and friends, whom we love experiencing their own violent storms of life, do we not also cry out to our Lord, Jesus, do you not care? And finally, when we see in our world the violent storms of war and chaos, do we not also cry out, Lord, do you not care? My brothers and sisters, as we read today, Jesus was and is in the stern, I'm sorry, at the stern of our boats of life. I have read that the stern is considered the most important part of the ship. It is where the captain of a boat steers and controls the direction of the vessel. The captain is the most knowledgeable and thus naturally takes control and pilots the boat in all kinds of conditions and in all kinds of weather. When we cry out to the Lord to help us, to guide us, to direct us, and even to save us, Jesus says to each one of us, quiet, be still. There are times when we all have felt or feel that the Lord is asleep and unaware of the storms that take place in our lives. But it is in our faith, it is in our belief that he is ever present and we are not alone. There may be some who would call this wishful thinking, but if you have ever felt the Lord come into your life during a personal storm, you know that he is in control and will never abandon us. Did he not say, and lo, I am with you. He also asks us, why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? In the first letter of St. John, chapter 5, verse 4, we read, For everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. In Holy Scripture, we see the power of God and faith from the leper to the blind man, from the afflicted woman to the, paraplyt to the paralytic, to each. Jesus tells us and shows us that if we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, all things are possible. 
He also tells us that our faith will make us whole. In the book of Psalms, the third Psalm, verse 5, we read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean upon your own understanding. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may we in prayer constantly call upon the Lord and learn to trust in Him. May we come to know Him and all upon Him to help calm all those storms that encompass us and those especially those whom we fear. May the words found in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3, be an inspiration. As you call upon the captain, captain of your very soul, you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast, for he trusts in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, the light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory the judge of the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Let us pray. Save me, O God, for the waters threaten my life.
sanctify our almighty eternal God and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Sweep me not away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great congregation. I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and on all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through this holy sacrifice, may we become a new creation to work together with your Son for the reconciliation of the world. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. It is through his teachings and miracles that. Through his ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and all people. Still hearing the word of our, in our world today, we strive to follow his example, to trust him, and to set our hearts on the world yet to come. Therefore, on this day, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, along with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, may we pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors and nurses, first responders and all health care workers. May we pray 
for peace in our world. May we in our humble prayers remember all abused and neglected children as well as all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence <coughs> both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of all who serve in our armed forces and pray that God would return them safely to their families. And Father, may we also remember all who are present here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice and praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to convert this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence, a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son, from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace.
To these souls, O Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father 
in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, for those of you who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist today, let us now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul into life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord,
but the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord's glory as the water covers the sea. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, through this Holy Eucharist, reassure us in all times of fear that in our passage through life you are ever present to protect and save us for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty, be acceptable to you through your mercy, may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the light, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood nor by cardinal desire nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word. Became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.